Hey folks, you are with Chandeep Chabra at Goodly. In this video, I'm going to talk about that how can you make your VLOOKUP a lot more robust. By robustness, what I mean to say is that you can do a lot more with the same VLOOKUP formula by just making a few tweaks in the formula. To take you through the lesson, I have a case here. Let's just try and understand the case. I have a data set here which says that the first column is the ticket number, the second column is the client and the third column is the product code. Pretty simple. Uh, about uh, 800 or rows of data and alongside what I have is some other data kept aside which has ticket numbers and the client name has to be found out so these ticket numbers are already present here and you just have to grab the correct client name for these ticket numbers which is a standard VLOOKUP I'm not going to kind of waste the time in making me explain what is VLOOKUP so we look up this value we look up in this entire range lock that uh, I'm just going to lock the range. Uh, the column number for client name is first column, second column, so column number two. And then please give me an exact match and zero stands for exact match. I'm going to press enter and then drag this formula down to the rest of the cells. And I have the client name. Now let's take a look at the problem that we might face. Now, as of now, we have selected uh, data starting from B4, which is uh, the first cell here, going up till 825th row in the D column. What if the the data expands tomorrow so let's say you have more data coming in let me just enter new uh, data here so let's say this is td1 and then uh, let's say we have some clients so let's say let's just write goodly and then let's say uh, you have some new product code so let's say prod one now as of now if i take a look at my formula the formula is going up till row number 825 and not expanding till the 826th row which is your new data so in that case you'll have to make adjustments to the formula once again and then ask that formula to go one row down and grab the additional row and capture that inside the formula which is kind of tedious you will have to keep on changing the formula over and over again let me show you a trick by which this is going to be possible so I'm just going to delete this data. After I delete that data, I'm going to convert this entire data set into a table, right? So I'm going to click anywhere inside uh, the cell, uh, this data range, press control T, T for Tango to convert this in, uh, data into a table. It says that uh, where is the data? The data is kept right here. Uh, my table has got headers so you have the headers right here and click on ok now you'd instantly see some formatting here um, and some filters have been applied here that means that this data is now converted to a table also please note that um, whenever you click on any side inside of the table you will have a new table tools design tab here this is exclusively for tables now the reason why we converted our data into tables is because table allows for additional data, data capturing. So if I now enter let's say TD1 uh, which is the new invoice number or the ticket number and enter a client name as Goodly and then enter a random product code so let's say prod1 you can see that this is now been captured inside the table and the table has expanded to capture the new row. Additionally if even if you enter you know a new column here the additional column will also be captured inside that table so let me just enter a new column here and let's just write um, something um, so let's say location right as soon as I do that you can see that the table again has expanded to capture the additional set of data here so tables are beautiful they have a self expanding feature and uh, you can work with them in your VLOOKUPs as well let's see how can we make this uh, VLOOKUP work as of now, every standard, every table is given a standard name. So if I click on any cell inside a table, go to the design tab and click on uh, here, the table name, the standard name for the table is table one. You might just want to give a more meaningful name. Let's say I give this as data set, right? And now let me just write the VLOOKUP formula. So I'm just going to delete all of this. So write a fresh VLOOKUP, look up this value, look up where I have to look in the data set. And you can see this coming up right here and then uh, this is the entire data set and I want to look for column number which is the client name column one and column two which is the second column and uh, lock that I'm sorry the second column and you want to look for the exact match and I have to drag it down and the benefit of that is that you don't even have to lock the data set now let's take a look at the new entry that we uh, made in our data set I think that was TD1 let's see if our VLOOKUP is able to automatically pull that up so I'm going to change this ticket number to TD1 and the client name should be goodly 
yep it works it works absolutely fine the next practical problem that a lot of people face is that uh, a lot of times your vlookup uh, the data at the back end of the vlookup is not just three column wide as of now you just have three columns so first is ticket client and the product code your data could be very large it could be 35 columns wide or 40 columns wide and you end up counting so in the third part of vlookup you have to enter the column number which is what i have entered manually so could I just ask Excel to give me the column number and the column number that I want is for the client name, right? So can I just go and tell Excel that Excel, I'm looking for the client name and can you just get me the client name, the correct column number for client name so that I don't have to manually count the column number. Let's see how can we do that. If you were to do it manually, how would you do it? So you would read that what is it that you want you want the client and you start counting from the left hand side so this is the first column for the VLOOKUP this is the second column and okay you say that okay fine my column is number two and that's why you manually write number three what if what if uh, somebody inserts a column here and this becomes column number three and then your VLOOKUP is now gone for a toss what would you do in that case now if the formula would have been robust this should should have been changed to three but it hasn't because this is a manual entry so let's see uh, what can help us fetch the column name automatically so there's a function in excel called a match function uh, it says m-a-t-c-h m-a-t-c-h let me just explain you how the match works so what the match does is match is going to count the position number so let's say if I ask you that on what position is client kept from the, f if you start counting from the first uh, cell here. So this is the one, this is two, so client is kept on the second position. So let's say for example, if I ask you another question, can you tell me on which number or in which position this ticket number is kept if you start counting from the first ticket number. So this is one, this is two, this is three, four and five. So match can give you the position number uh, if you want to count uh, sorry vertically or if you want to count diagonally. Let's see how the match works and let's try and make a formula out of it. So as of now, I want the client name. Uh, let's just make this equal. So client name and client are two different sets of string. So I will, instead of writing client name, I will just write client, right? So that the formula is able to catch that. So I will write equals to match. Now match formula has got three parts. The first part of the match is lookup value. In more English terms, it's asking you that what is it that you're trying to match? Or what is it that you're trying to uh, find the position of? So I'm trying to find the position of the client. This word, the client. I'm trying to look this up here in the data set and in the headers. Don't worry about how this shows. This is a table. So this is showing up like this, but the way you select and select the range has got nothing to do with what comes up here. So don't worry about that. So I want to look up for client and I uh, want to look it up in the data set in the headers and I please give me an exact match. So three parts of match look up what, which is my client look up where. So this is the place look it up here and then please give me an exact match. Remember that match gives you the position number. That means on which position is the client kept. So when you press enter, this is going to give you two. So if you would have changed this to let's say product code, now this would give you three because this is kept on the third position. So let's say ticket number is kept on the first position. So it gives you one. So match always gives you position number three parts of match, match what, match this, match where in this range. And please give me an exact exact match. Zero stands for exact match. That's about it. Just one caveat with the match function. Please don't put a, a multi-dimensional array in the match. That means that when you write the match function in the second part of the match, the where part, where are you trying to look up for? Do not give a data range like this. It's a multi-dimensional data range. That means multiple rows and multiple columns. Match is going to return you an error. So I, the match works on either a single row or a single column. That's how the match works. So I'm just going to uh, not just manually specify the range, but rather than that, I'm just going to say data set. And in data set, I'm just looking for headers. That's what the original thing was. Press enter and I have the ticket number, position number one. Now I'm going to change this to client. Now this two, although is given by match, but although this two is not being captured or linked to the match formula. So what I'm going to do is instead of writing two manually here, I'm going to link that with my match formula here. 
lock that part because uh, I have to copy the formula down and this too should not move down and drag this down. Now see the beauty. Tomorrow if my boss comes up and he says, hey, listen, uh, for these ticket numbers, please don't take out the client name. I rather want to see the product code. So you just have to say that product and code and press enter. As soon as you press enter, Mash is going to find the position number and throw up here. And then you can link that up in your VLOOKUP formula. Press enter. This becomes three through the match formula and the three goes up and sits inside your VLOOKUP and you have all the product codes coming out. So that's the beauty of tables and that's the beauty of the match formula. Although you can choose to write the match formula in a single uh, formula as well, but just to make things simple and help you understand, I just wrote the two formulas differently. I hope you like this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you so much for watching this. Take care and bye-bye.